here's how I manifested my dream home, my beachfront house on the waterfront. Today I'm going to take you through my 10 step manifestation process and show you exactly how I manifested my dream house on the waterfront with water views. Now my first step in the manifestation process is peace and that means to do something every single day that makes you feel peaceful because if you don't stop reflect and have some quiet time you can't listen to your intuition and manifest whatever it is that you want so when i was in our last house and the house before that i've always had a morning routine where i have sat down and i've had a period of a minimum of one minute where i just sit down in silence and i just listen and i just ask what do you want me to do today and i just ask and i've also had a period in every day where I've done something that makes me feel peaceful like just sitting and reading or just sitting somewhere beautiful and looking at the view. So that is the first step in the manifestation process. The second step in the manifestation process is to decide exactly what you want and because I was moving into this house with my husband we both had to get on the same page and decide exactly what we want. Now a lot of people ask how long did this entire process take and that really depends because if you look back about seven years ago that is the time when I really started to seriously desire a house with a view of the water that was right on the coast. That was the first time in my life where I was doing serious personal development work and I really saw a vision of exactly what I wanted and I did communicate that to my husband at the time and he said that he also would really desire to have a beach house on the coast with water views. So that was about seven years ago when the idea first popped into my head but if you asked how long the process took from the time when we actually started taking action, it was about one year. So it just depends on the time scale that you're talking about when you ask how long it takes. So both me and my husband did know and we did decide that this is what we wanted, but we had a house where well, we actually had two house moves in between the first house that we lived in and then we moved, we lived in Scotland and we moved to a bigger house, we doubled the size of our house there so we did manifest a lot of things that we wanted when we moved to our second house and then from there it was a really nice peaceful house and it was surrounded by trees and it was a really, in a really safe nice area but we didn't have any really nice views and I really desired to have beautiful views out of my window especially views of the sea it's what I really wanted so we lived in that house for about five years and then my husband got a job in a different country in Wales still part of the UK and it was a desire a massive desire of mine to move to a warmer climate to be near to family and this is something that I had manifested there was lots of parts of this process it wasn't just about the dream house it was everything coming together which was a complete manifestation of things that I had wanted for a very long time so it was a big long process so we my husband got that job down here and we decided to move and we put our house up for sale in Scotland and it was a lot of hard work to sell that house there was lots of cleaning daily viewings making it look like a show home there was lots of action in place I didn't just sit and visualize exactly what I wanted there was lots of action lots of hard work in this process to get my dream house and to get our dream house so we ended up moving from Scotland down to Wales but we didn't move straight into this house we moved into a rental because it was just going to be too difficult to buy the house that we wanted when we hadn't really seen it we didn't know what the areas were like and we we didn't really know what we wanted at that time so we moved into a rental house and before we moved into that rental house and while we were living in that rental house we did decide exactly what we wanted and we both decided that we wanted to live on the coast next to a beach so that was step two the decision making process step three in the manifestation process was to intend 
intend that we were actually going to get it. And there's a few different ways that people use to intend their dream houses. A lot of people use vision boards to get clear on exactly what they want the house to look like. But I've never really been a massive fan of vision boards before. I don't know why, I'm just not that kind of person. I'm more into the way that I feel and not into specific looks. And I did do a little bit of vision boarding. I went onto Pinterest and I saved some pictures of houses that I really liked on the coast. And a lot of them I saved pictures of really big, nice kitchens. So that is a little bit of what I did, but mainly what I did was I just created lists. I'm a list person, I like to write, I like to use words, that's how I manifest using words. So I created lots of lists and I created these lists with my family, I created lots of lists on our own and I also did spider diagrams where you write um, the word that you want to manifest in the middle, like dream house, and then you have lines going off the circle and you write what you want around the outside. So we did lots of different spider diagrams, including what we wanted. And there was lots of things that we all wanted, but some of the things that we wanted is we wanted to live in a safe area. We wanted to live next to a beach. We wanted to live on the coast. We wanted to have beautiful views out of our window. We wanted to have sea views out of our windows. We wanted to have a terrace out of the front of our house so we could sit and look over the sea. We wanted to have four bedrooms in the house. We wanted it to be tall so we had uh, beautiful views from the top uh, story of the house. We wanted a very safe place for the kids to play. Whether that was a garden or a place outside, we wanted it to be safe so that the kids could enjoy playing and they didn't have to be bothered by uh, cars coming in and they could have lots of room and lots of space to play. And there were so many things that we wanted. One of the things that I really wanted was a really big kitchen, a big kitchen with an island. I'd never had a big kitchen in my whole life and it's something that's really important to me because I do a lot of food prep from scratch. I make all my own food because we've got a lot of food allergies in our family. Me and my two kids have got a lot of food allergies and I'm also really into health. I like to eat healthy food. So it's very, very important to have a place in the kitchen where I could prep my food. And I'd often had very small kitchen spaces and it'd been cramped and there's just not room to put your plates out or do all your chopping. You have all your fruit and veg laid out and put the juices and the blenders and, and the food processors and all of the kitchen equipment out. So it was really important to me to get a big kitchen that was one of my biggest criteria for the inside of the house. And we also wanted the inside to be light and airy and very natural. I'm into natural things. I like wooden things. I like stone. I just like natural materials because I am such a massive fan of uh, the natural beauty of the outside world. And I like to bring that into the indoor space as well. So I'm not into bling or massive amounts of luxury. I just like everything to be quite minimalistic, but very natural. So these are all the requirements that we had and we've got clear and intended all that. The fourth step of the process is clarity. That means getting very, very clear on what you want and bringing it to life. And the main way that I did this was through an exercise that I call my perfect groundhog day. And I actually developed this exercise before COVID hit. And it's quite ironic because we, a lot of people ended up living groundhog day over and over again, especially here in the UK where we've had lockdown and people have been living the same day over and over again from their home. But interestingly enough, uh, my perfect groundhog day included a lot of being at home, so I didn't mind at all. And I actually ended up manifesting my perfect day while in lockdown, so I didn't mind too much. But basically what it is, is it uses a technique called scripting, and you script out exactly what you want your perfect day to look like and feel like, as if it's already happened in the future and you're looking back. So for example, it might start off like, I woke up in the morning and I walked out onto my terrace and looked at the beautiful views outside and felt so grateful that I get to have this amazing view watching the sunrise over the water. So that's 
scripting and that is the perfect groundhog day and I had created a couple of different versions of these and one of them included being in a sunny climate, another included having beautiful waterfront views, another included um, having extended family near and it all ended up manifesting so that was very very exciting that it ended up happening. So that was how I got clear and manifested exactly what I want by bringing feeling into the visualization process by using words like I'm so grateful. And the perfect Groundhog Day is something that I teach in my dream business framework, so watch out for that. The fifth step in the process is to believe. It's to believe that you've actually got what you wanted and you can do this through a process of visualization and just imagining that you're already there. And I would imagine myself going out onto my terrace and just absorbing the sun's rays and looking at the beautiful view and that was how I believed that it was actually going to come true and I did this quite frequently at least once a week. The sixth step in the process is to detach and this means to lose all attachments to the way it has to be and the way in which we did this was we originally decided on a town that we wanted to move to. It was very close to my husband's job. He moved, we moved to the city of Cardiff in Wales, the capital city, and we always knew that was one of our requirements as well, to be close to a city, but not right in the city, to be on the outskirts, somewhere beautiful, but also to be within close driving distance to the city. So my husband got a job in Cardiff and we wanted to be close to the city, and we decided on a an area that was very close to the city centre so that he could have a very short commute because that was something that he used to have a long commute and we wanted him to have a shorter commute. So we decided on an area that was very close to his work and it was a lovely area that was right on the coast and it did have a beach but it was a pebble beach and it was a lovely area, um, a very, very expensive area that we decided to move to. And we were looking at houses and we were thinking that all we could afford was a tiny little house. Um, we weren't sure if we were actually going to be able to fit in this house. There would be no sea views or anything and uh, we'd be close, we'd probably be about 20 minutes walk to the beach, but it was a pebble beach and it wasn't a sandy beach. But anyway, we decided on this area. Um, and we, I did detach from the process and I knew that God or the universe would bring about the perfect place for us. And it turns out that I tried to get my kids into schools in this area and I was told that all the schools in this area had massive long waiting lists and it was going to be very, very unlikely that our kids were going to be able to get into a school in this area. And um, in fact, they hardly had any school places available in the entire area, which was a really massive area. And they only had three school places available for both children, and two of them were really, really far away in the middle of the countryside, nowhere close to the city. And one of them was in a place that we'd actually been to before. It was a town on the coast, a little bit further away from the town that we originally set our sights on. And we thought, oh, it's probably too long of a commute. It's maybe like a 30 minute commute away from the city. So we'd ruled it out previously, even though we'd, we'd been there before and we absolutely loved it. It was on the coast. It had a massive big sandy beach, a very, very popular holiday destination, very touristy area. It not only had one beach, I've counted five beaches so far. There might be more that I haven't discovered, but so far there's five beaches in this town. and she said to me there is uh, one school in this area that has a place for both of your children so we thought about it and then we thought yes okay we'll move to this area and it turns out that it all worked out perfectly because um, a week after we moved covid hit and my husband was working from home anyway so he wasn't commuting he wasn't going into the office as he planned to he was living at home and we got a rental place which was just a few minutes from the beach and we were able to walk to the beach every single day in lockdown we had beautiful sunny weather and it was just an amazing time so we definitely 
got more than what we expected by detaching from the process and getting rid of the need to know how it's going to happen and that God or the universe has better plans for you than you've got for yourself. We were going to put ourselves in an area which only had a pebble beach and we've actually really desired a sandy beach. So that's what we got in the end. That's where the school places ended up being. So it all worked out absolutely perfectly. The seventh step in the process is to trust and just to trust that the right thing will happen at the right time. So here we were living in this rental house and we knew that we would be there for at least six months because we'd signed a lease that was at least six months long. And then if we didn't find a, a house to buy within six months, we had to extend the lease to 12 months. So we knew that probably we'd be there for at least 12 months, but we started looking for a house to buy because we knew that the process could take a long time. A lot of houses fall through and don't end up going through at all. So we knew that we just needed to take our time. And we fell in love with the area that we lived in which was really close to the beach and it had a brand new housing estate on there and we lived in one of the houses in the in the rental house and we decided we wanted to stay in this area so we were looking for a house to buy in this area and we kept on looking online and seeing all these houses online um, but we never really got a good feeling about any of them like we we saw that they ticked most of the boxes but um, most of them didn't have any nice views, most of them were not on the water itself, right next to the water. There were a few next to the water and they, they didn't have gardens and they didn't have anything, uh, other things that we wanted. They didn't seem big enough and they didn't have a garage, that, which was one of the things that we thought we wanted. And we just um, kept on ruling out all of these houses, and, but we just trusted that the perfect house would come up at the perfect time. And sure enough, it did. After about, I think it was about six months after living in our rental house, this house popped up online and it didn't, it didn't really look amazing from the photos to start with. It was a new house and so it just looked like a kind of normal new house. You, they don't really have much personality. Um, but it was right on the waterfront so we knew that it had the beautiful views. So we just got a really good feeling about this house and we just had this like quiet confidence that this might be the one. So we arranged a viewing to go and see the house and it's a, a three-story house and um, the, the bottom story has the, the kitchen, diner, office which is one of the bedrooms downstairs the first floor has the lounge with the water views and um, the master bedroom and ensuite bathroom and the third floor has two bedrooms and the family bathroom so um, we knew that it was it had all the rooms that we needed for all of the different reasons the kids kids could have a bedroom each and we had everything we wanted and it was right on the waterfront which is which was absolutely perfect. So we decided that we would go and view the house. And when we got to the, we had to go and view the show home because the house wasn't actually finished yet. It wasn't built. So we had to go and view a show home, which was exactly the same as the house that we were going to buy, but it was a little bit further down the road. So um, it was in, in exactly the same area so we could get a good feel for it. And as soon as we got there, we thought, wow, this is absolutely stunning. Um, it was right on the waterfront and the front of the house here, it has a, a promenade where it, there's no cars are allowed to drive on the promenade. So it's just the front of the house, there's a terrace and there's a promenade and then there's the water straight there. So there's not even a road uh, that stands between the house and the sea so it's really really close to the sea plus it has this amazing promenade that you can walk all the way down and it's a really safe place for the kids to play they can play outside there's no traffic and they can just go up and down for a really really long time um, at the moment they're still building each end of the promenade but when they get to the other end they are going to be opening the end of the promenade and will be able to walk directly to the beach in just a few minutes without even going on a single road without crossing a single road and the other side goes straight to the other side the other beach the 
massive big beach on the other side, the very touristy beach, and um, you only have to cross one road to get to the other beach on the other side. So both ends of the promenade lead to a beach, two different beaches. One of them's very private and secluded and the other one's like a really big, um, bustling, touristy beach. So it's got the best of both worlds. And we just thought, what an amazing location for, what a, a fantastic place for the kids to grow up. Like where else in the world could you get a place where you could actually just walk straight to the beach without even going on a road at all um, and, the, and the kids can have this amazing place to play and we we thought yes the outside of the house is the perfect location you couldn't get any more perfect than that but when we went inside the house we we looked at the the second floor and the first floor and we thought yes beautiful lovely views stunning we really liked the feel of the house and how airy it was and the flow of the house and everything and then when we got to the kitchen which is on the ground floor what they'd done was that there was a, a room which was a bit like a kitchen diner but they had separated it into two and half of the room was the kitchen and the other half of the room was what they called a family room and they'd put like a sofa and a TV and a dining table and chairs in there. Um, so that was the bigger side of the room and the other side of the room had the tiniest kitchen I had ever seen in my whole life. And I just remember just standing looking at that kitchen and thinking there's not even room for like two plates on that kitchen surface. How would I prepare a whole family's meal? How would I get all my vegetables out and chop them all? Where would I put my blender and my food processor? And there's no cupboard space. There's no space for all of my my chopping boards and my kitchen gadgets and all that kind of stuff. And I just stood there for a really long time thinking, oh, I don't know what to do. It's like, it feels like the perfect house, but I just, this kitchen is just not what I need. Um, and then we um, we went home, we thought about it and we thought, there must be a way around this. There is a solution to every problem. I always believe that there's a solution to every problem and if you want something enough, you will find a way. And I tried to whittle down my the contents of my cupboards. I thought, how can I do less? Maybe I won't do so much juicing or you know, maybe I can make this easier and to you know, just kind of compromise on the space and everything. And we decided that we were going to reserve the house anyway. And, um, and after a while, we, we were arranging the, the flooring to be put down. We were putting like a, a, a wooden feel flooring throughout the house. And they, they said that they were gonna put it in the, in the kitchen as well. And suddenly we realized that what we should do is just do a renovation of the whole room. We should just um, get rid of the kitchen completely and put a, a big kitchen that extends all the way up this, this room and just have a kitchen diner put in a big island in the middle and then put a dining table at the bottom of the kitchen. So we decided we were going to uh, renovate the house and that completely removed that problem. So it ended up being the exactly right house, but we had to think outside of the box a little bit. It didn't just come perfect in its perfect form, we had to really take action and put a lot of hard work into this kitchen renovation because it was it ended up being really stressful, very last minute. We had two weeks before we moved in and yeah, it was a, a lot of hard work and a lot of stress to get that kitchen renovated, but we did and it's beautiful and perfect and we're so thankful for the result. So the eighth step in the manifestation process is to act it is to take action. You can't just visualize and then expect your dream house to just pop out the other end and just fall on your lap and just say, here I am, you can just move straight in. It doesn't work like that. There's always action involved in manifestation. You have to co-create and meet God or the universe halfway and do your piece. We had to act, we had to um, put the house for sale in Scotland. That was a lot of hard work, a lot of physical, mental, stress involved in where are the kids going to go to school we were stressed out of our box thinking we don't have a school place for the kids you know it was really emotionally and physically draining selling our house and then we had to take action down here we had to actually decide that we were going to do it we had to put the money down and just commit to it and take the action the ninth step of the manifestation process is to feel 
grateful. It is gratitude. You have to be grateful for where you are currently. So when I was in Scotland, I was, I went through a hard time where I didn't feel grateful for what I had and I really struggled. And then I remembered about gratitude and learned how to be content and learned how to be happy with what I had and learned how to be grateful for what I had there. And then when we moved to the rental, although it wasn't ideal and it wasn't our dream house and it wasn't exactly what we wanted, I was grateful for every aspect of that rental house and especially things that would be similar to our house. Like our rental house was also a three story townhouse. And I was so grateful for the views that we got from the top because it was such a tall house. And I was so grateful for the space and the location and the fact it was next to the beach and it had everything we needed in this kitchen and ev in every part of the house so and we had all these different toilets on different floors of the house so I was so grateful for everything we had so gratitude is something that brings your manifestation into reality and even before we had the house I was so grateful knowing that I was going to have the dream house that we both wanted. And the final step in the manifestation process is step number 10, which is to receive. Now, you wouldn't believe, but a lot of manifestations actually fall through at the last minute because the person doesn't feel worthy of actually having what it is that they've manifested. So some people block it, some people push it away, and some people say, no, thank you, I've changed my mind. And the same was true for us. It almost fell apart at the very last second. What happened was we'd, we'd done everything we needed to do, we'd renovated the kitchen, we'd put the floor down, everything was ready to move in. And then we were going around our house doing snagging, which is a process of checking all of the doors, all of the windows and everything that was working properly in the house so that we could tell the developer if something wasn't working properly in the house and they would fix it. So we were going around the house and doing all that and then we opened up the, the vent downstairs and all of this cigarette smoke came wafting in to our house just through the vent and then we realized that the next door neighbors were smokers and they smoked outside and their terrace is right next door to our terrace so right next door to our house now my son has very severe asthma i used to have asthma i'm very very intolerant to cigarette smoke and i'm very much into health and i don't want um, any of our lungs polluted with secondhand cigarette smoke and this was a massive blow to me maybe much more so than anybody else but to me this was like a deal breaker and i remember saying to my husband i'm absolutely gutted like i just really don't want to live here now because of this smoke and he actually felt the same way he was like I i've not gone through all this to get my kids you know fresh sea clean sea air only for them to have their airways polluted by cigarette smoke you know this is just not what we signed up for we just didn't expect it and it didn't really like cross my mind for some reason that you know you can't control your neighbors especially when you are living very close um, next to somebody else in a townhouse that you can't you can't really control what happens in the outdoor space but in a warm climate we really expected to have the windows open and we knew that the cigarette smoke was just going to come straight into the house and we just didn't know what to do really and we we actually felt like putting the house on the market we got really close to selling it we were so depressed and we just thought oh after all this we came so close to having our dream house and we just feel like we don't want it anymore and we had to really think for a few days what are we going to do and um, you know that that um affirmation that always pops into my head there is a solution to every problem and i was thinking what is the solution here and i was praying for a solution and then an idea came to me and the idea was to put air conditioning on every floor of the house so that when it gets really hot we don't have to open our windows we can just have the air conditioning going because in the uk it's not very common to have air conditioning and i know in like america it's very common in a lot of areas but because in the uk the weather is quite changeable and you don't always get very hot um, periods throughout the year so it, it's not really worth your while putting air conditioning into your house so most houses don't have it but down here in in wales it is um it's quite um southern and 
therefore we get much better weather and it's much hotter than it was up in Scotland. So it really seemed worth our while to get air conditioning installed because I used to have a portable air conditioner and I'd used it in our rental non-stop for about 10 months of the year. So it did seem worth our while installing air conditioning. So we decided we were going to install the air conditioning, we were going to invest in it and um, it's been one of the best things having having air conditioning it makes the house feel so comfortable so uh, yeah that was what we needed to do to receive the house and yeah it was very stressful getting into the house but finally we got in and we had lots of work to do to get the house into a livable state and finally it's just about livable we've still got lots of things we need to do in the house and there's still um, some projects that need to be done but it is in a much better state now so I am so happy with the house it is just fantastic just all the little things as well that make it seem really luxurious like I've got um, my water filter is or is part of my tap so I don't have to constantly fill up my water filter all day long and um, I've got a bed that kind of um, that it declines and inclines automatically with a with a press of the button and every morning I wake up I go into my lounge I just take a few steps from my bedroom into my lounge and we've got this really low um, picture window and I sit inside the uh, window ledge because it's a really massive window ledge and I sit in there and I can see the sun rising over the water and it's just the most beautiful sight in the world and it just makes me feel so grateful and uh, yes, we've had challenges, we've had ups and downs, and that's just life. There, that is the balance of life. With extreme ups also come extreme downs, and it has been really stressful and really hard work and really emotionally and physically draining, but I am so glad that we did it. It is so worth it, and I'm just so happy to finally be living in our dream house. And I've also got a free gift to share with you. It's called double your revenue masterclass and in this masterclass i share with you how to get your first customer how to double your revenue and how to increase the size of your audience so go and check that out by going to kathkyle.com forward slash double and i also share all of the secrets to manifestation in my dream business manifestation course and this is a an entire package that includes 30 days of video lessons where I show you exactly how to manifest your dream business. So go and check that out at kathkyle.com forward slash manifest. And now it's your turn to go and put your stamp on the world.